Hello, friends. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so honored to be here with Jeff Tolley, who's had a profound and beautiful near-death experience, which I'm very excited to have him share with all of you. Before we get into the interview, I'd like to offer a trigger warning because Jeff's story does talk of suicide and a suicide attempt. A little bit of background on Jeff, he would like to share that his knowledge and understanding comes not from the academic world, but from a real world living example of what it takes to overcome such adversity, hardship, trauma, addiction, and disconnection from source. His life's mission is to share the fact that no matter how lost, alone, or deep down one has taken themselves, that change is possible and self-worth can be fully restored. Thank you so much for watching. Jeff, welcome to the channel. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. Of course. And if you wouldn't mind, could we start out with you sharing your near-death experience with us? Yes. Before I get into that, I, I want to bring some context into how I died. I think that's a big part of the story, actually. Many things obviously led to that, but my, I died from wanting to actually kill myself. I died from wanting to remove myself from the earth. That's that's how my near-death experience came about. I was a drug addict, but that addiction came from many other factors growing up. I think drugs were a way that I could cope. Actually, drugs were the way I could cope. I had a lot of trauma, abuse growing up, and I didn't really know any other way. I didn't have any other coping skills, so I got into using drugs. It kind of started off with pot, kind of went into drinking, and then it went into hard drugs, and then eventually it, it got into um, narcotics and things like that. And then me and my younger brother were basically best friends, and we would use together all the time. My younger brother named Jason at the age of 21 had died from a drug overdose. And that really kind of was the ending point for me. After he died, I think I just kind of let it all go. And I decided that I didn't want to be here as well. Maybe one year I lasted after he died before I decided that I would take my own life. I did so by taking a whole bottle of narcotic painkillers. One thing I can say, I guess, about suicide that might be misunderstood or at least my perspective from someone that actually went that road for me it was a build-up it was years of being in so much pain that the unknown made more sense than the known because when i was going into it i didn't know what was going to happen when i would die i had no clue although when i was little i did see spirits so but i didn't know what what that was like it could have been it could have been a place where I went to hell and you know, we hear things around suicide and we hear drugs and being a bad person. Cause I was a really bad person in the sense of how I used to live being an addict. I would lie and steal and cheat and all that stuff. So there was a fear of what would happen, but it was a greater fear to live another day. So removing myself made most sense. And that day is so stuck into my brain. It's just something I, I think I'll never forget as that was the very end of my life. It was also the beginning of my life. July 17th, 2010. I'll never forget it. I got up and that was the day I decided that I would end my life. I was very clear about it. There wasn't like an in-between. It was the decision was made and I was going to do it. And I prepared and I did it. When I finally actually did it, I remember darkness kind of just trickling in. So it wasn't like all at once, but it was trickling in from like the corner of my eyes. And I knew it was like, oh, here, like I'm going to die. Like This is it. I remember feeling a sense of relief, excitement, and also deep fear all at the same time, because I had no real clue what was about to occur. And then there's a period of about 15 to 20 minutes that I don't know what happened. It just went black. And then the next moment I remember is I'm in an ambulance floating above my body. So there had to have been about 20 minutes because someone had to have called the ambulance. The whole, you know, that whole thing had to have happened. So I give it about 20 minutes where I don't recall. I still don't recall. I have no clue. So I don't know what may have happened, but I'm staring down at my body and I'm knowing for a fact that I'm not dead. And actually I felt more alive than I ever felt. So I look at kind of us being here more of the dead state and being dead is more of the alive state. We kind of got it backwards. <laughs> I like like this holding on for dear life thing This we must survive is if we, tr if we truly knew what it was, I don't think we'd be afraid to die. 
I think we we would embrace it because we're going back to our true essence. It's as if we take that essence, our soul, if you will, and then we kind of imprison it with these bodies. And these bodies have an interesting ability to hold energy and, and it kind of like make us dense. So it takes a spirit form and it really brings us to this very dense form, which is where we are on earth. And it's fine. We need these bodies to experience this reality. But that's really what it was, an experience of reality. So I saw that we chose or I chose this life as an experience. And then I set up certain challenges, certain things, certain people in my life that I would put there on purpose by myself so that I can then give myself the opportunity to transcend, to overcome these challenges without even knowing that they're challenges. I saw this in a sense as... You know, when we get like the same challenge, it keeps coming, but it's got a different face, but we know it's like, the, oh, here we go again, the same, you know, it's like the same round and around and around thing. That's like a blueprint challenge. That's something that we actually chose. So when you have something in your life that keeps coming and coming and you're like, why does this keep happening? You put it there. So the whole goal is to actually like get through it and not act and behave the way you always do, whether it be running away or whatever it is you do, you're supposed to face that challenge. That's why it keeps coming. And actually it will not stop coming for your entire life until you get through it. And if you keep avoiding it, it gets louder and harsher too. I look at these things now as a way to improve, not something that I feel like I'm being victimized over because that's the way it was before where everything was being done to me and I'm a victim. Everything's out to get me. And that's just the way it is. I didn't realize that I'm the one who actually can take control and power my own life to overcome these things. And I put a lot of those there. So when I was outside of my body, it's kind of weird because everything's at once, which is weird. So time seems to not be at all what it is here. And we kind of experience this in a linear fashion, but in reality out there, there's no time. It's all like one moment, many different perspectives of the same moment. It's kind of hard to explain. But here we experience time as this progress where we're seeing like these things coming at us at a slow rate where we can watch the progress happen through time. Where out there, there's no real progress. It's just all automatically happening now as far as that goes. But what was really interesting to me was the bodies. So I'm looking at the physical body, but I'm also seeing other bodies. So the mental body and the emotional body were also separate bodies from the physical body. So they're separate. The mental body has energy to it. The emotional body has energy to it. The physical body has energy to it. And then the soul body is what energizes the rest of the bodies. It's like, if you don't have the soul, the body won't work, but it collects energy and it makes it dense. So for me, I was really dense with the amount of drugs and stuff I did or drinking, smoking, all that stuff. So it made my physical body really heavy, but the emotional body was incredibly heavy because of the amount of trauma and abuse. And I didn't deal with my emotions and I stopped. So it became very heavy. And I think that's where the pain comes from. The heavier we make these bodies, the more pain we'll feel, which is why, I, you know, I wanted to remove myself because there was so much heaviness in all of these bodies. The mental body was also very heavy and it was um, all negative. Like, so my thoughts, my beliefs were all coming from a place of what was me? I'm a victim. Everything sucks. You know, no worth, no value in that regard. Then everything else reflected that or made that become true because of what I believe. I do look at it as a mirror now. It's pretty obvious that the world reflects back to us what we believe. If I believe I'm unworthy, the world will prove to me that I'm unworthy. If I believe I'm worthy, it'll prove to me I am worthy. It's all in a matter of what I believe that I'll be given the reflection and the proof of that being so. And it doesn't matter what it is. It can be anything. You can believe whatever and you will be proven that you're right, whether you're right or wrong. It's kind of like uh, everything kind of stemmed from the mind in that sense, but the other bodies play a big role. My NDE was pretty obvious to me why I had it and came back was to see where I went wrong because I also felt other people's emotions like I was them. So anyone in my life, I experienced their point of view from how their interaction was with me. Mostly was negative, but I did have those, you know, those off ones that were positive, but mostly negative because I was mostly negative. So that's just kind of what you're going to get. And so I saw all that. So I felt that. So it gave me the sense of, oh, yeah, I would never want to do that. You know, you have a better chance of learning if you feel it yourself. It's kind of like the way I look at karma. Karma works in a sense as a tool of growth. It kind of shows you if you feel what you're doing to others, then you, you probably wouldn't continue to do it, right? So 
that's the way I kind of look at that. And when I saw that, when I saw that I went wrong, I set up a game for myself to overcome and I failed every element of it. So when I came back, that was my goal was to take all these bodies, take what I learned and then remove the weight, start going through my challenges, start bettering myself and developing myself to be a better person. The NDE forced me to become a better person or forced me to know who I really was, which was ultimately a better person to begin with. When I was really little, I was very compassionate. I was really caring. I had all these great qualities, but I think I just lost touch with that. It made me get more in touch with who I really am. And being from the soul perspective, I saw what I really am, what I really represent. It gave me a direction back, but I still had to go through all the hard work to get back to where I was. It's kind of like you find the child. When I was deprogramming, I got to a point where I'm like, oh, there's there, there I am. Like that's the child. That's my that's the little boy that I remember being. When I got to the little boy, I knew I made it. I knew I made it all the way back. So the programming was kind of complete. And then from that, I can design my own program and develop, okay, what are going to be my beliefs? What is my worth? What is my value? How do I treat people? How do I go about my day? That's on me. Because when we're little, we don't really know that we're taking beliefs from our parents, from whoever, teachers. We're just kind of taking beliefs and they kind of become our own and then we're walking around with them. But if you deprogram yourself, you can then choose your own beliefs. So you're not carrying other people's. But that it forced me to kind of move it out. So I saw all these things, of course, but I also saw that the idea of past lives was a real thing too. I saw that I had lived many lives and that we kind of keep continue to play this game for soul growth. Now, I have a theory and it's a theory and I think it's true for all of us and why we come here is on a soul level, we have a soul signature. We all kind of have our own vibratory signature. And then we come here, I think the goal is to alter that signature by the time we leave through human experience. So we're actually expanding the soul by being here. I think that's the that's my theory to why we're all here. Ultimately, it's a soul growth thing. Even harsh lifetimes will actually bring more change to the signature. So the harsher the the challenges, the more transformation, the more things you learn, the more things are like that, the more you'll actually shift the signature, you know, the more you gain from this experience. So I I do feel like that's why we're here fundamentally. And um, the soul growth is a big part of this eternal game we all play with ourselves where we just continue to try to expand ourselves. My brother that died um, the year previous was the first other thing that I saw. He he had come up to me and he was his true real self and he was bubbly and he was just what he was. It was a reunion. Like we, we kind of hear these things, you know, I've seen movies like, oh, you die and you get a life review and then you meet your family members. Like that's, that's true. That happened to me. That, that absolutely was the case for me. Maybe not the way we've seen it, but the way that's what kind of played out for me. And then my brother had brought me into this. It was just a just a light room. And then I was in front of these three other beings. I would call them spirit guides, if you will. There was a suggestion that I go back. It was um, kind of, I guess, pushed, but it was like, it's up to you. You don't have to. But if you go back, this is what it can be. This is what things can look for you. And then that light room lit up in some holographic imagery and showed me the future. It showed me the future of myself, but the world did look different. I will say that myself in the future. I don't know. The air seemed cleaner. The, there's something about it. There was a big change. The world isn't like it is now. And that was, I was about 50. I would say in that vision, I'm 40 now ish. So it kind of gave me this, like, I don't know. What is it like a carrot on a stick? It kind of gave me this, oh, you know, if you go back, this can be, um, I ultimately wanted to go back anyway, because I saw how I went wrong and I wanted to, I just, I felt like if I come this far, I might as well go the rest of the way. A part of my soul's path actually was to go into dark. That was kind of set up that way, dark to light. So that was a kind of a theme of mine that I would experience this road by disconnecting myself and then reconnecting myself and then learning some of these ancient mysteries and things like that. And then being some sort of a teacher at the end of it and teaching some things and maybe being a guide of some sort to some degree. But in the future, I saw it was a, it was a school. So there's some sort of a school that I'm a part of. And that's gave me that hope. So when I came back, it was horrible. It was really hellish, really. Um, so I didn't really go to hell after I died. I kind of came back to hell when I came back, like that was hell. I had to experience all that pain, all the emotions I had to, I experienced homelessness. I experienced horrible things. 
like all the karma just came back on me. And yeah, it was really, it was really horrible. But I think it was knowing who I am, knowing what I'm here to do always pulled me forward. I will say if I didn't have that vision, I don't think I would have fulfilled it. I think that vision always kept me moving forward as a possibility of something better. I think I needed that because I think it's got so bad that I just wanted to quit. I just, I don't want to do this anymore. So it always kind of pulled me forward. I needed a lot of the things I got. Okay. So also there was this idea around, we hear, you know, like judgment. So I was the judge and the jury and the prosecutor and all that of my own life. I never felt judged. That was all on me to be the one, let's say, judging, but it wasn't even judging. It was just like, oh, I screwed up here. Oh, I could have done better. I could have done that. I could have done that. I didn't. I didn't do that. I was scared. I was this. I was that. I was afraid. And it was like, okay, so um, I got to do it differently. So there wasn't any real judgment. If people ask about God and stuff. What uh, my experience of it was, it was, it's all one, but that's my experience of it. And the fact I didn't see, I didn't sense any separate thing that created things. I I experienced everything as creation, as God in the creation. It's all one. So there was no separation from God to something else. But that was my experience. It all felt very unified, very one with all things. However, when we come down, we're, we, we separate. We separate ourselves into individual personalities. But what we're doing to others is pretty obvious is what we're going to get back. It's like a a karmic law or something. I don't, I don't know exactly how it works, but we can't get away with doing something to others. And that includes animals and also the earth. Karma works on all levels, not just people. It's like a ripple. It's like dropping a pebble in the lake and it ripples out. It's, it's going to affect everything. So that's kind of what I experienced, but I do know that it changed my life completely. I was given a second chance at life. And I'm grateful for that. For the last 12 years now, I've been doing nothing but developing myself. That's just like my mission now is to share also that from someone who's been on the streets, drug addict, someone who's been so low in life to the point of wanting to kill myself, change is possible. If you truly want it, it's like you're commanding the universe to then allow the steps to come in to give it to you. But you have to really want it. And then it's like you become supported. So if, like, if there are people that are living, you know, low or whatever it is, it's just the real powerful intention with action that I'm going to change. And you put the action forward. Once you begin to do that, it's like you set this momentum forward and you get supported in it. And that's what it was like for me. Like the support was there. It was brutal. It was hard, but the support was there. I was always given the very bare necessities of what I needed to get through. And I was given the challenges to learn what I needed to, to develop myself to be who I am. For me, it was many challenges. It didn't seem like they ended. It was always one lesson after another. I think it was that way, though, because of what I'm going to do in the future, but also because I didn't really learn anything in the past. So I'm kind of like being sped up. It felt like it was like every day was another challenge and it just became really exhausting. But I eventually learned how it worked. And now I look at challenges as a gift. I look at things that are um, that aren't planned as a gift. I look at things as no matter what I'm doing, I'm being led to somewhere ultimately where I should be led. Even if something's off from that or something happens, I'm always looking at the, the positive side of it. And also I learned when it comes to, let's say life or giving life meaning or life having meaning, it was pretty obvious that it's up to us. It was up to me to give life meaning. So I chose the meaning and then the meaning reflected it back to me. And I think a lot of people might be waiting for the meaning or something or there's no meaning or what is the purpose? The purpose is for you to give it purpose or like to live on purpose. So it's up to us what we make of life. So anyway, I think that's about it. Do you have any questions? Jeff, thank you so much for sharing not only your near-death experience, but everything that you learned from it. And there's so much that you shared there that we could discuss. One yeah. thing that stood out to me is how you mentioned that we set up situations in our life and those challenges will keep coming back over and over and over. Yeah. <laughs> Before I even got into near-death experiences and spirituality and all that, I would yeah. see this happening. I recognized this happening in my life. And exactly like you said, I would play the victim. And it was uncanny how it's like, I would have this negative emotion about this situation. And then the situation would come back around just like I had imagined it with all my negativity. And eventually it became so clear to me that I was creating it. Yeah. And I had this aha moment. Yes. So now when those come, do you, what do you do now? Like, how are you, 
dealing with the challenges when they come around now? Do you have a plan for it? Yeah, it, depending on the challenge, because obviously some are a lot more intense than others. Sometimes it's just easy for me to look and say, this is a challenge that I clearly wanted to overcome in this lifetime. Yeah. So I'm just going to have a positive attitude about it. And I'm going to choose a positive viewpoint. And that's all it takes. If it's something yeah. a lot more intense, and I'm still learning to do this, I have to go into the negative emotions and sit with them and try to transmute them or heal whatever it is inside myself that's causing this to keep surfacing. And that's Absolutely. more challenging for me, but I'm learning how to do it. What I do and like I'm building an online course of all goes into it. But what I'm doing is it's, it's all about internal investigation. We need mm-hmm. to be able to investigate what's driving a lot of our own actions. And our actions are coming really from what we believe. We should start questioning what we believe to be true. So the way I kind of do it is if you act a certain way that you know is out of alignment then you know that you now have a belief out of alignment. That's the proof that you have one out. And then you kind of ask yourself, like, what am I believing right now that is allowing me to act and behave this way? If you're really honest with yourself, you'll find the belief and then you can remove it. And then you can place a belief in there that's actually beneficial. This is the work that needs to be done. And it can be on another level too, like the emotions. Is If you have a negative emotion, once again, it's it's driving from a belief. You can ask yourself, what am I believing to be true about that's making me feel this way? And then you pull it back and you investigate. So you got to investigate what you believe on all levels too, not just about yourself, but about the world. Like You can go into this internal investigation and that's where you start to find out that actually most of your beliefs are wrong and that a lot of what you believe don't even belong to you. They belong to someone else that like said something and you kind of like bought into it. And then now you're carrying it around. So when we start doing this kind of work, I really think this is how we change the world. This is it. We got to start changing ourselves so that the world can behave a different way. We also got to take responsibility. I think too many people are waiting for something to save them or for something else to do something. And so we're kind of in waiting state. And that's why I think the world is the way it is. We're all waiting for something or someone to do something when really it's on us to actually start doing stuff and start making these changes for ourselves ultimately. And so when I took full responsibility for my own life. And I mean, full, everything bad that happened was on me. I played a part in it. Then things really changed for me. So no, no matter what, I now have a part to play in all things good and bad. If something happens that's bad, then I can be a part and say, yeah, I, I'm a part of that somehow. A part of me was co-creating that situation. Why did I feel like that was beneficial? What can I learn from it? And and moving on for next time. It's just about growing ourselves and being very conscious with how we think and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's really kind of the work, but that's, that's what it is. And although, like I said, the different levels, the different physical levels, and we can kind of lighten the load mentally and emotionally and physically. Life seems to be a little more flowy. You know, it flows when you're like that, but when you're heavy, it's just resistance, resistance, resistance. And then life becomes almost a chore. You get up in the morning pissed off and angry. You don't want to do what you're doing. You're angry all day. It's like, it seems to be that's your life. And I know that all so well. And now it's very flowy. Wake up happy. I do what I want to do. I choose my emotions. I choose, I choose what I believe. So I decide what it's going to be, not, oh, we'll see what kind of happens to me. It's like, no, I'm going to make happen. I'm not going to let things happen to me. Right. Yeah. And that was like the real big change. Ultimately, though, what the the soul thing was another thing. Like when you really think about the fact that we're eternal, we don't end is such a an interesting thought because that idea of that, like we never stop existing is wild. And it's just a wild thought. (laughs) It's just so knowing that and we continue on and it's it's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. The thought of that, just knowing too that we are indestructible too. Yeah, we can ruin these bodies and we can whatever, but we can always grab another body too. Our souls are indestructible in that sense. I think it's really amazing that we um that we get to be a part of creation. Really, I mean, if we're here, if if someone's here, then then you're a part of it. Therefore, then creation wouldn't be the same without you. Which therefore you're important, right? You're like right. you're a piece of the puzzle of all that is. So your piece is important on a soul level. So it's I think it's really interesting and really um, eye opening when we start looking at our lives that way. My life was very gloomy and dim, and everything was what was me, and everything was negative, and everything was victim based. And that wasn't the way to live your life. That was a horrible way to live. Now that I have the contrast, I prefer 
the open-mindedness and the just the, almost as if you feel a wonder when we were little kids the wonder for things was there and then it went away so the wonder is back when i look at things even like the moon or the stars it's just some things there's a wonder it's there again well that almost that creativity or that imagination has come back and i think that's what will come back for all of us if we deprogram some of the negative stuff that we've taken on well thank you for sharing and i think your message is so important. Just getting the information out there because so many people, myself included for many years, just didn't realize, I didn't realize the type of power that I have and the type of power that each one of us has. And I also want to highlight something that you said when you were talking about taking responsibility. A lot of times if people hear that, then they will start blaming themselves for things that happened in their life or saying, are you telling me that everything that happened is my fault? But I love the way you described it because it's taking responsibility, but not taking on guilt for it or taking Mm. it on as part of your identity, but just looking at it and saying, obviously, I thought this was a valuable experience. So what am I supposed to learn from it? Yep. And all things can be grabbed. And if you can learn Mm -hmm. something, then you you just you just added a piece of the the growth puzzle, like we're about growing, you're going to grow through anything good or bad. And, And a lot of like, I think negative experiences give more resistance. So if you look at it, like in the gym, the heavier the weight, the more growth in the muscles, it kind of works the same way I've noticed in the soul, the heavier, the the harder the experience, the more growth comes from that if you can overcome it. And you'll get experiences to grow you like it would be a muscle where the stronger you become, the, the challenging things become less challenging. It's because you're stronger. It's not because they're less challenging. It's just you're stronger. You can handle it better. And that's what I've noticed as well. Like I can handle things where I think others would, would be very, a very hard time handling some of the stuff that I can handle fairly easy, but it's just going through that growth phase. We're here to grow. I like, like that's the way I see it. Or like, cause I'm here to grow. I think we're all here to grow and learn and develop. Like that's a part of this kind of earth school. So we can do that. And then we can choose in which way we go about that. It's not like wanting bad things to happen for to grow. But when something does happen, that would say negative, we decide the outcome, we get to decide it. So so many things have happened bad to me, right? But when I put a positive spin on it, the outcome was better than what I could have imagined. So that's some things that we don't know what's ahead. We don't know that let's say someone stole something from you and you're all mad and angry and you're like, wait a second, this is going to work out. And then somehow insurance gave you double the money or something. So you got something better or like, I don't know, something in that regard, or you'll get something better out of it. Something will come to give you what you want to. I've heard of experiences where people, they wanted a, a new home and their house burned down. And it's like, well, you want a new home. So your, your old home had to go away so that the new home could come in. So they ultimately got this new home they wanted, but their house had to burn down in order to get it. But it was how they go about it, right? So if you want something, I feel like things will get, get removed. We have to be okay with re- the removal of things because that's, I think, where it's hard. Or if we're in a bad relationship, we know it's not good. We know we, know we shouldn't be in it, um, but we want something better. The removal has to happen. And sometimes if we don't do it ourselves, it'll be forced on us. It'll happen. Mm-hmm. They, it'll just happen. And then it's going to be harder for it to happen if we allow it to happen kind of on its own or let the universe take it over. I feel like the higher mind comes in and beats us with it if we're not listening because that's another thing i noticed too if we don't listen it gets harder and harsher to the point where we could like we could get beat so i know i was like really fast and i i had no patience and i was always going too fast and and i broken both my heels and i know that was an effect of slowing me down so it took me to break my heels just to slow me down so if i'm not going to slow down myself then i will be slowed down That's kind of what I've seen as well. Like it's as if we have to pay attention to the signs, be intuitive, know what we're, know what's coming and then take action on that. But that's also difficult as well. And it took me many horrible things to happen for me to learn. Oh, so I got to like, I got to do this on my own. I just, you know, if you just keep going with what you know isn't good, you're going to, it's going to come back. It's the way I see it. So negativity doesn't have to be negative. That's really what it comes down to. Are you familiar with Joe Dispenza? I've heard. I don't know much, okay. but I've heard. 
Yeah, yeah he's a, a pretty well-known voice in the, I, I guess you'd call it maybe the law of attraction community, but I know he doesn't like to use that word. But he talks yeah. about a lot of things that you're talking about. And he has a quote where he says, you can learn in a state of pain and suffering, or you can learn in a state of joy and inspiration. It's your yeah. choice. The whole idea that a lot of the things we go through is because that's the only way we're going to learn. But we yes. we could choose to live in a state of joy and inspiration and avoid all the suffering if we wanted to. Absolutely. No, absolutely. And I think each individual is so different and unique with how they go about with what they came here for. I've learned better when it was experienced. So I'm a better learner through experience. So it's like I'm given experiences to learn more than here, read a book or here, get it from there. That I think that's just the way I learn best. So that's what comes to me more often, where maybe mm-hmm. someone learns differently. So something else will come to them to give them the experience that way. Or they'll have friends that are always like for whatever. And then they got to learn from that. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it all depends on on the I think on the individual soul really mm-hmm. is what it comes down to. We're all so different in how we learn. And I've been one of those, like, it's like, it always took me longer. It's, it's better now though. Like I catch it now and like, you know, I'm still, I'm still a growing, evolving soul. So by, and by no means am I perfect. I've come a long way from where I was and I'm incredibly intuitive. I see it when it comes. So when a challenge is there, I'm still challenged by it. Absolutely. But I now know that I must go through this, even though it's uncomfortable, it's going to hurt. It's going to suck. It's going to be embarrassing or or whatever it is, I have to get through this. Because I just know that if I don't, it's going to be worse down the road. But at the end of the day, like I said, I think we're all here to learn whatever whatever we chose to. So I set out a list of all the challenges that I know are in my blueprint as they come around. I think that's a really great thing for someone to do is make a list of the challenges you know that are challenges that keep coming back around, like those big ones. Those ones are built into what you came here for. Because if you know what they are, then you can actually work on them. Because a lot of people don't know. They don't know. Like, they don't know what they are. They don't even know. So they don't even know they have to work on them. The first step is to know what they are so that you can actually then work on them. And you will notice a growth that's so automatic to you. So amazing. When you work on those challenges, like, whoa, wow. You can feel it. You can feel the growth that comes from it. I had a lot of things happen when I was young on many different levels. And I felt the healing. And then from that came this growth when I was older, because I never dealt with it. But the healing that I felt, the growth that came out of it was, it was amazing. And that is possible. We can change trauma. We can change the brain. We can heal from these childhood things that it would be hard to think that we can. Or I know myself, I thought this is who I am. I'm broken. It can't be fixed. If you broke something, you can't fix it. I didn't know that you can heal those things. And not only can you fix them, you make them stronger. I think that's really important as people know that they can change, that they actually can do it. There's a way to do it. And if you are traumatized, you've been through stuff and you feel like you're stuck, whatever, you can get out of it. There's a road forward for sure. You can heal. Wow. So I'd like to ask you, maybe you've already covered this, but is there anything else that you want to say about that process of healing? Like what people can do to remove the weight from those bodies that you were talking about? Absolutely. So I think you, what I do is I I categorize the the different bodies. So you can work on all of them together one at a time, but I think, you know, like say the physical body, and maybe start by removing some of the toxins in your body. If you're, if you're smoking, if you're drinking, if you're having behaviors like that, start working on those and start removing those things from the physical body that will help with the density of the physical body, which will ultimately help on many other levels. You'll just feel better. And then on the mental body, this is really the work is all about getting to what it is you believe and figuring out where it come from. Is the source reliable? Do you still buy into that? Well, how is it serving you? So really getting down to the core of your values and your worth, which is like the foundation of it is that. So if you're having things like self-sabotage, this all goes down back to value. If you're doing things that you know aren't serving you, you kind of have behaviors that you know just are keeping you stuck, that's value stuff. So you got to get in touch with the identity, the value of yourself. And so that's the mental work. And it's like, it, it's easy said, but it's it's challenging and it takes time. And the emotional work is, 
you got to work through your emotions. Like I know men, they're, they're, they're worse off so bad. They, they've built themselves so heavy. They need to cry. So the way I've kind of looked at it is men need to cry more. Women need to like freak out and get angry more. And that will actually burn off the emotions more. So if men, like if I'm freaking out, punching things, I'm not burning the emotion off at all. But if I'm crying through it, I'm getting rid of it. It's coming out. Women as well, not all, but this is kind of like a general. If women, instead of cry their way through it as they normally do, and they actually get very angry and freak out and go through that whole thing, they will burn it off better. There's a there's many ways you can remove emotional energy. There's many different things you can do that will help that. I know even acupuncture is one to help open the meridians. Stones are a great way to blow off energy. There's tapping methods. There's all kinds of methods you can do to burn off emotional energy, um, but it's all on kind of what aligns with them. But the best way, honestly, for me, I cried for three years straight. That was the best way for me. I started crying. I never stopped for three years. So I had three years of emotions built up in me that needed to come out. And it came out best through crying. And I noticed when I cried around other people and I was vulnerable and open, I was able to burn off way more than crying by myself. Because I think there's a vulnerability through it as well. And it allowed so much more energy to come out. And I've had many experiences where a lot of energy was was released from my system. The energetic thing, like, so the, I call it the soul level. People talk about like raising their vibration and stuff. It's already vibrating as high as it can. So if you want to raise your vibration, you just got to get rid of the other body weight. And then it will shine through. So, you know, so people, they kind of, it's almost like they bring this sense of like darkness. Like you can feel they're a bit creepy. You feel it. You're like, ooh, they had, okay. Those people are holding on to a lot of dark energy. Then there's people they look at, they like radiate. You feel like good in their presence. You feel inspired around them. They're holding on to a lot of light energy. They don't have a lot of that heavy, dense stuff. So that's what's going on with these people. Some people have too much energy, too heavy, and others is lighter. So we're kind of drawn to that. And if we're heavy people, we're going to be drawn to heavy people. We're just going to attract it right to us. And light people will attract the light people. But a dark person can become light. You just got to get rid of the energy. But then on the soul level, we're also not equal to. I see us as all being very different in on the soul level as well. I'd say start with the physical. If you start on the physical, the mental and the emotional stuff will automatically be shown. So if you start taking care of your health and becoming kind of like you start doing some self-care, you'll start thinking differently about other things and it brings things out. Same with the emotions. So start with a physical body and that's how you can do it. Hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's so practical and helpful. Yeah. My husband yeah. has told me multiple times that I need to get a punching bag and not because I have an <laughs> anger problem, but because I can't, I don't ever feel or express anger. So what you're yeah. saying, it rings true for me. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, it's general. So uh, yeah, yeah, you absolutely should. And, you know, we all have emotional energy stuck within, we can, we can get it out, but there's many different ways. And I know there's different ways that I got all of it out as well. I'm sure not, I'm, I'm, I'm sure not even still all of it is out. But I got a lot out. I can tell you that a ton of it came out. And so that's, that's the work. If we're heavy, we should, we should try to lighten the load. So that's what I wanted to do was practicality. I wanted to bring real, do this, get this result in this community. I think there's too much theory. I think there's enough talk about consciousness and I, I get it. it's all out there, but I don't, I feel like people are missing. Well, what do I do? How do I, how do I awaken? How do I? You know, the way I see awakening is deprogramming. Enlightenment is unprogrammed. That's my definition of enlightenment. You're just unprogrammed. You're back to self. Okay. It's not a state of being in peace. It's a state of being yourself. That's enlightenment. And the awakening is deprogramming. So people say, like, how do I do this? Well, that's what I want to do. I want to bring real practical, do this and get that so that people know what to do. And it is broken down into the bodies and into many other factors. This is what you do. This is how you can fix and change your life. This is what I did. It worked for me. And I've worked with countless people that it's worked for them. So it works. It works if you if you do it, but you got to do it. And it takes time and there's many other things. But that's what I think needs to be done. I think maybe we've been kind of programmed to think too much outside of ourselves. You know, like people are putting all their money into their cars and their vehicles. But what about this vehicle? This is the vehicle we need to actually drive at other vehicles. So I think money, if you will, or finances should be put to invest more into ourselves or start looking more internally as things to do instead of 
a job out there or or this out there it's always out out but what about all the work and the job inside which i think that's kind of a part of what they're doing is keeping everyone really busy outside of themselves instead of really focusing in there's so much distraction i gotta do this i gotta do that i gotta put the tv on i gotta make my mortgage i gotta work i got i got kids i got they're so busy outside that does anyone really have the time to actually fix or do inside stuff I gave myself 12 years. I've been doing this for 12 years. So I never took the jobs and stuff outside of me. I decided that I was going to do this work and that's what I did. But I suffered greatly for it too. I don't recommend anyone doing what I did, but there should be some balance within it. Like I'm going to do this many hours of inner work per week and, you know, and have it a part of your life, like your routine. It's important. I love that advice. Thank you for everything you've shared. Um, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions about your near-death experience Absolutely. that I know fire my away. viewers are going to want to hear about? Yeah, fire away. Okay. So you mentioned that you saw many past lives. Do you know yeah. about how many you had? 